the title of the talk, I think everybody knows, is Asher in the Morning, and it's about the St. Philip tornado, church tornado of 1924. I'm assuming a lot of folks here have an interest in it to begin with, and that's why you're here. So hopefully, maybe I'll either bring some things together or maybe shed some light or uh, just help you think about things. Okay. Now, what do you think when you hear the word tornado or whirlwind or uh, dust devil, windstorm, or cyclone, or I guess cyclone as it's pronounced around here? And as you would more than likely think of it, it's a violently destructive funnel cloud uh, tornado is what we're used to. <coughs> but when you think of Louisiana when you hear the word, Well, until I really started putting this stuff together, I really never thought of Louisiana as being associated with tornadoes. But a couple of websites that you see here show that in the top ten tornado states, Louisiana is found to be number nine or ten. So it kind of makes sense if you think about it in terms of hurricanes and a lot of tornadoes that could spawn there. Anyway, tornadoes can take place in any of the states. The deadliest tornado killed 695 people in 1925. And these are just some facts. A thousand tornadoes occur a year in the United States. Uh, typically, they're very short-lived and not that large. And there's like three categories, small, medium, and large. And uh, the St. Philip tornado really would probably fit in the small category. Um, although they can happen any time of year, they're uh, usually in the south from March to May and uh, from nine or 3 in the afternoon to 9 at night. And on average, they can cause about 80 deaths and uh, 1,500 injuries a year. And here's the copy of the paper, uh, newspaper, and I've got a replica here, in fact, that of the August 25th, 1925 New Orleans item that appeared uh, the next day. And um, this was on the wall of my grandparents' house for Hubble's in Nether. And uh, it was something that was framed, and as a child, I was always fascinated and learned that the gentleman in the middle turned out to be, he was my great-grandfather, Arthur Bax, uh, Arthur Hope, sorry. And uh, I was told at an early age that he was my grandfather's dad and he was killed in a tornado when my grandfather was a young age. So this was something that really intrigued me as a kid, thinking about how terrifying that was to begin with. But it also sparked my interest in genealogy, and this is the main reason that I got interested in asking about who my ancestors were and um, where they came from. So I started exploring this side and the other side. And then shortly thereafter, about 10 years actually, my grandmother got me a copy of the Enterprise, which I think most of you who are from the Bachelor area are familiar with, this reprint that Pam Folks did uh, put together in August of 1984, commemorating the 60th anniversary. And this year did a wonderful job of pulling together all the information from the past, as well as also pulling um, interviews and such from some of the different uh, survivors or relatives of the, uh, who were still around at the time. So these two items, as well as uh, some books that came out, I joined the Society in 1985. Um, El Mood came out with his book on Bashery and some of the other books that came out thereafter really kind of spurred my interest. And although my wife said my grandparents are all up and down the German Cajun coast, uh, this tornado has always been something that I found fascinating and intriguing. And uh, at the time, actually, someone suggested maybe uh, fast forward to the year 2007 while doing, constantly doing research and looking to find out more and more on the subject. I came across a forum on the uh, internet called the Bachelor Forum where I met a, a bunch of people who are here tonight, in fact, that Jerry Schechtsnyder has put together out there. And it's an interesting conglomeration of uh, historical and genealogical facts, uh, and as well as just community information. Now, to just go over and get familiar with a lot of the names, um, just so as we talk, there were eight people that were killed outright when the storm occurred. Uh, their names were Florence Fernandez, Marie Louise Tosclair, Elia Wagaspak Hedel, Stephen Ambrose Hedel Sr., uh, Stephen Lewis Hedel Jr., Bershman Wagaspak, Virginia Hubble, and Arthur, my great grandfather. I'm going to try and go through when, where, who, what, after effects, uh, and effects on the community, and questions, and reference and contact information. 
Um, in addition to those that were killed outright, there was also Belfour Haydell, Stephen, Wax, uh, Stephen Haydell's oldest, or younger brother, excuse me, who was killed, and he died actually three days later. Anyway, I think most folks here probably have a good idea where Bashley is. Um, it's about 45 miles due uh, west of New Orleans. Uh, you know, we're here right now, it's right across the river there. And this area would be, uh, actually, they have a little church there. Um, it was what's commonly referred to, I guess, as Front Bashery or now North Bashery. And um, also, it would have been commonly known in the day as either St. Patrick, before it became Bashery, or even now just the St. Philip area, which I think was basically from the uh, parish line on up, I guess maybe St. Joe, perhaps. And here's a picture of the old church. Uh, if many of you have not seen it, the old St. Philip Church, uh, this is what became the church hall. This is a picture from 1906. This was constructed, uh, it had traces of its foundings back to about 1873 when the Archbishop of New Orleans sought to have a mission church out there. I think Our Lady of Palm Secor, um, which was about Highway 18 and Highway 20. And, uh, over time, with the interest in, in the church, he bought a large parcel of land downriver and uh, got the people to uh, start building a church and a uh, rectory. And so they built a, this was actually a temporary church. It's a temporary church which lasted for 42 years, according to the St. <laughs> Philip Directory, uh, which Pam Foles worked on and did a wonderful job as well. This, I believe, is also a convent, and you can see there's also an elevated walkway. And this picture was taken during the 1906 uh, Jubilee of one of the priests, Father John Pierre Martin. Um, so these are actually both taken on the same day, but they're at slightly different angles. And it gives you an idea of what the old church was. And I don't know if there's any other pictures that exist besides this or any interior shots. But anyway, this is what I've, uh, I've seen. They had about 11 priests there over the years, uh, I think in the 122 year history. And about 1917, they got the new priest for the time, uh, Père Bartholomew Fontaine, which I think a lot of the older folks around remember him. And um, he was a native of France, redemptorist order, and taught in Switzerland uh, before coming to the United States. Uh, there was a tradition of arranging fairs and festivals to raise money for the church, and he, uh, it dated back as far as 1831, and um, 1881, excuse me. But then there was also, he was carrying this on, and he was also known as being a very kind of priest. Uh, the original, uh, the new church was built, dedicated in April 19, 1921. Um, as far as we know, uh, it's been in the same location. Um, I, I'll talk to Father Clarence Wax back, and he was telling me based on what he knew, that's, it's been in the same location as it always has. Uh, he didn't think it had been moved due to the levees at any point. Uh, the population back in 1921 was around 2,000, and uh, in 1995 there was about 1,450 members of the church. At that point, when the new church came on, the old church basically was converted into a church hall for classes and uh, fairs and festivals. And as many of you are familiar, this is what St. Philip Church looks like today, and this is the new church of 1921. The other thing uh, that I had asked Father Clarence, I wasn't sure where the name St. Philip, where that came from. St. Philip was named after Saint, uh, the brother Apostle St. Philip, who was the brother of St. James, and with it being the brother parish in St. James, it uh, is where he said the name was derived from. Now I need to change. <laughs> One of the questions I had is where was the original church located? And based upon the information in the text of the newspaper articles, talk about it being about 100 feet away from the present church and 100 feet away from the rectory. So if you draw 100 feet off there, it seems to be somewhere around there. Uh, I've tried to find out. I don't know if anybody has any contrary information to it, but uh, this is my, uh, in theory, based upon what I've read, is about where it's supposed to be, which would have put the old convent around here as well. Although I thought I had read that the old convent was closer to this property where the Ford dealership is now. Um,
Also in 1924, uh, that year, we were, Louisiana and all the South was having a very bad drought, uh, very serious from June until November. There's only about 5.69 inches of rain. If you, and, and that was about the worst uh, drought that the area had suffered at the time and since, like, I think, the 20th century. Some things about Vachery at the time, um, from what I'm able to understand, there wasn't any electricity in the area until the 1930s. Um, of course, kerosene lamps and things like these Delco light plants, which basically I think are gasoline generators, would have been available uh, for those who could afford them. But once again, I don't think it was something that was in continuous use. Uh, there was, a, I think, the St. Peter Church and Reserve had a listing of having had one at the church in some time in the 1920s. Uh, did file that, uh, there's a Vashley Forum, I, I don't know if I mentioned it when I was talking, I think I did, but uh, anyway, Victor Roulette, one of his grandsons, was talking about how they were showing silent movies between 1923 and 1925 out in the area. Uh, Saturday nights back Vashley and Sunday nights in uh, Wallace, and he had one of those uh, generators. I think there was no too limited to telephones. There was, I think, one in 1921, and I can't remember where it was. I read it the other day. But it burned, the place burned down, and they didn't set up another phone. And then by the 30s, I think there might have been up to about five. So there wouldn't have been a whole lot of communication via phone. Um, of course, no too limited indoor plumbing. Uh, of course, there were cisterns, outdoor I mean, outhouses, chamber pots, wash tubs, clothes lines, etc. Wood burning stoves and obviously some automobiles in the area. I think that Ford dealership started back in, was around in, 20, in 1924. I don't know if anybody can tell me whether or not. But anyway, that, just trying to give you an idea of what 1924 in was like. Now, the community members, uh, I took the 1920 census and I tried to figure out what the breakdown of individuals were. And uh, back then there were 57% African Americans, 37% Caucasians, and 6% mulatto families, because that's how it's listed in the uh, census. And this would have been for the 7th Ward, which is where the St. Philip area is uh, encompassed. And a lot of the names that you see are the names that are probably still out there today. Black Stratton, Sheck Snyder, spelled the other way, uh, Foshe, Hedel, Email, Force Player, Simon, Gidries, and Hulls, and had a multitude of different uh, different occupations, but a lot of farming, cane related, uh, cane farm related work. The store managers, uh, salesmen, physicians, of course. So this is trying to give you an idea of what kind of what the community was made up of. And I've tried to put this on a map here as well, between the St. Joe plantation area up to the parish line uh, with the church there. And you can see some of the names that were the St. Joseph plantation, the Wagusback family there. Uh, Raymond Delphine, Wagusback's home right next to Laura, where Stephen and Amy Haydell was living. Uh, the Magnolia area, right around where Julius Hubble's property was. And then you had a number of Hino, Oobs, Simons, families, and various Wagaspacks all up and down here. And then Dr. Lionel Wagaspack, I believe, is just a couple of houses down from the church property. And Dr. Fernandez was up river in the Edgard area. Uh, the proceed, proceeds of the fair were supposed to benefit the new church that was just constructed in 21. So this is only two or three years later. Obviously, they probably still had some bills to pay. Uh, Stephen Hedell Sr. was part of the original building committee back in 1919, and he appears to have organized this uh, fair. In addition, he was highly he was also involved as president of the Holy Name Society and uh, really involved with the Knights of Columbus. Uh, his wife was the president of the Ladies Altar Society, and um, so they were heavily involved in throwing this fair. In addition, Virginia Hubble was uh, president of the Children of Mary Society, and uh, Father Fontaine would have been there supporting the group uh, because they would benefit the church. And it also appears that Dr. Lionel Wagsback was heavily involved in assisting the direction of the fair.